Hi, in this video I'll explain about the size of a nucleus using a representative animation of a nucleus and an atom. You can see an electron that's orbiting uh, on the periphery of an atom and at the center of the atom you can see a nucleus comprising of one proton shown in red color and there's a positive uh, sign on it and there are three neutrons of a yellowish color and all of these things the proton and neutrons are rotating about some axis that's a spin and angular momentum that's a different subject we're talking about size here in this particular video and nobody has actually seen a nucleus now indirect experiments by scientists gave an equation r or the radius of a nucleus is equal to r0 into a to the power 1 by 3 now, r0 is a constant 1.1 to 10 to the power minus 13 meters. It's a very, very small number. And A is the mass number of the nucleus. And we know that that mass number is equal to the number of uh, protons Z plus number of neutrons N. So therefore, it's logical that the radius of a nucleus is proportional to the mass number to the power 1 by 3. To find the volume of a nucleus, an important assumption is made that it is a sphere, a ball. It's also assumed that protons and neutrons are spheres. This assumption was made to make things easy, although in real life nobody has actually seen any of these things through the most powerful telescope. So with the assumption of a sphere, V is 4 by 3 pi r cubed, substitute for r as r0 a to the power 1 by 3 whole cubed then you get 4 by 3 pi into r0 whole cubed and inside the brackets a to the power 1 by 3 whole cube becomes just a now r0 is a constant so basically the volume v becomes proportional to a and that's logical now just a small word on the atom itself you saw in the animation a nucleus and an atom which is much larger than the nucleus. In reality, the atom is more than 10,000 times the radius of the nucleus. Now, that means that there is a lot of empty space between the central nucleus and the outer periphery of the atom. That's true, and even in the alpha uh, scattering experiment, you might have seen that most of the alpha particles that bombarded atoms just went through the atoms without any deviation and only a few particles got deviated when they hit the small nucleus at the center of a very large atom. The atom's shape is also assumed to be a sphere only to make things simple. Although in real life the shape of the atom is a subject of research and it need not be a perfect sphere at all. I hope this video was useful to you. Thanks and have a great day.